This is an introduction to the TechLog4 software by the Energy Conservatory. In the agenda today, we'll start by covering applications for the software. We'll look at a configuration sheet. Then we'll do a demonstration of a single zone three fan blow dart test, a demonstration of a two zone two fan blow dart test. We'll review the completed tests and the test results, and we'll review reporting options two different options you have for generating reports from the software. And then we'll review setting up a three fan blower door system for the blower door test. So some applications, there, there, are, there are various instances where you'd want to do graphing of pressures in a home to diagnose multiple different issues. There, there is an option for long-term data logging where you can either have a computer in the field set up and do long-term pressure monitoring, or you can use a memory on a Wi-Fi link with a DG700 and use an app to set that in data logging mode and to retrieve the data. Or with the DG1000, there's memory on that also. And again, you would use an app to set up the data logging and to retrieve the data. And both of them will give you a tech log file and an Excel file with the data, whichever you prefer. If you want to control multiple fans for a blower door test, currently our tech log software is the only one that will do that. And it will also generate a report for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that will include all of the information that they require, all of the data that they require for a test. So connection options for a single DG700. As you can see in this image, there's a if you have a newer gauge, um, newer than 2008, it will have a USB communication port on it. And uh, it'll also have the nine pin serial communication port and certainly the fan control jack. So we, we no longer carry the Wi-Fi link, but, but we did have a Wi-Fi link that added that Wi-Fi capability by plugging into that serial port and, and getting power uh, from the batteries on the gauge. Another option is that USB A to MIDI B cable, and that does require drivers be installed on your computer. Or you can use a USB to serial adapter, which requires drivers also, and uh, a DB9 serial cable. And those are available in, in multiple lengths. Or you can use CAT5 cable and a pair of DB9 to CAT5 adapters. This gives you more flexibility, so you can you can just have uh, various lengths of CAT5 cable and, and adapt it to the, the those single adapters. Connections to a single DG1000, you can put the gauge in the create network mode, and there's a radio inside the DG1000 that broadcasts that, that Wi-Fi signal, and you'll see that in your network settings like you would when you're connecting to any other network. And you'll need to enter a password the first time around. We also have a micro USB that also requires drivers. Uh, you need to make sure those are loaded on your computer the first time around. Or you can use Wi-Fi in the join network mode and connect to a router. In this case, the router is broadcasting the signal and the DG1000 and the computer are connecting to that, to that signal. If you're gonna use ethernet cable, it's not as simple as, as plugging the ethernet cable into your computer because a computer doesn't have something that can assign IP addresses to the gauge. So you need to use an ethernet switch and, and a router. And it's the router that will assign the IP addresses to the computer. So ethernet cable will plug into the switch, the router plugs into the switch and your computer plugs into the switch. So that's typically not done with when using a single fan, usually the micro USB or, or Wi-Fi would be used. So this is uh, connection options for multiple DG700s. So if you have multiple DG700s with Wi-Fi links, you can put those Wi-Fi links in router mode. You can use the TechLog software to do that. Go to configuration settings, and then from that page, go to configure Wi-Fi link. Another option using CAT5 cable along with serial connections on your DG700 and use a DB9 serial hub. 
and then that plugs into your computer using a single USB cable. So in this case, we're showing an eight port hub, uh, so you could plug eight uh, different gauges into that. And you can use any combination of cable and Wi-Fi. You can use a DG1000 as a router. You've got one set up in the Create Network mode, so that's the first gauge here, and that's broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. And then you would put the, the other DG700 in Join Network mode and go through the process of connecting that to, to, to this gauge. And then your computer will see the first gauge too. So you can connect you know, multiple DG1000s to another DG1000 using it as a router and then make the connection to your computer. Okay, or, or you know, another option would be you, you could use a router, uh, a centrally located router and connect multiple DG700s to that. You could also use a, a hard cable connection using ethernet cable. And when you do that, you do need to use a router to assign IP addresses to all of those gauges and then you could connect to your computer, either do a hard connection using your cable or, or make a router connection. Another nice option is set the DG1000 network configuration to create network and then use the Ethernet bridge configuration. And what this allows you to do is run a long length of Ethernet cable to one gauge and also have that gauge set up as a router. So it's, you can connect multiple gauges to it via Wi-Fi and then have a solid connection back to your computer that way. Okay, so then um, to, get, to get set up, we're going to download the TechLog software from our website, energyconservatory.com. We'll set up the building in test conditions. We'll set up the blower equipment as needed. We'll make a sketch of the fan setups and, and uh, your gauges channel settings, make the connection between the gauges in your computer and launch the TechLog software. So this is showing our TechLog4 device configuration worksheet, which you could print off from the help menu of TechLog. And we're drawing a sketch of the building. We're making a sketch of where the fans are located and where the gauges are and what the gauges are being used for. We've got the first gauge is set up like for a single fan blow dart test where channel A is going to the outside, channel B is going to the bottom fan. And then with our second gauge, we've got channel A going to the middle fan, channel B going to the upper fan. And then we're gonna measure envelope pressures on each side of the building. So the third gauge is going to the other two sides of the building. And then the last gauge, we're monitoring the last side of the building and an interior pressure. So we want to put this one in an area that might be in the main part of the building and then run a tube to part of the building that might be farthest away or, or in an area that we might, might think there's a bottleneck. So we're monitoring interior pressures and we want that to be within 10% of the, of the induced pressure. Uh, we're writing down the serial number of, of that gauge, 1953. We're labeling that gauge as, as in the northwest corner of the building, so you want to give it a name to kind of identify that gauge. Channel A is going to the north side. Uh, channel B is going to the west, so we've got a, an envelope pressure on, on two sides of the building. And then our next gauge, 954, we're going to call that the left gauge. It's on the left side of the fan setup, and we're calling that one south, channel A south envelope, and channel B we're calling lower fan. And 55, we're calling that the right gauge, it's on the right side. Channel A, we're calling middle fan, and channel B, we're calling upper fan. Okay, and then our last gauge, calling that uh, east because of, of the location of where we have it, and it's, it's measuring the envelope on the south side and an interior press. And then we'll launch that, um, that TechLog software. Okay, so we're ready to do a demo of our TechLog software. We've made sure all our gauges are connected to the computer and we'll launch TechLog and we'll go to configuration settings and scan for ports and devices. Now it'll search all connections to the, to the computer. Okay, it found all four gauges, click okay. All right, then I'm going to double click in here. It gives us a list of the 
serial numbers. I'm going to choose 954 first, and we're going to call that one left. That's our left gauge in our setup. And then I'll click on four gauges. Double click in the second one, and we'll choose 955, and we'll call that one right. It's on the right side. Next one is 81, and we'll call that one Northwest Envelope. And double click on the next one. Take the remaining one. You can see the other ones are grayed out and there's only one black one left. And we'll call that one. That's the North Envelope and an interior pressure. Okay, so we've got those all named. So now I'm gonna hit View and Edit Channel Settings. So now it brought our four gauges up here. Each one is under a different tab. And our first gauge, channel A, is set up like a standard blower door, single fan setting. So channel, we've got our envelope, and that is our east envelope. We'll just give that an E. Channel B is a Model 3 fan flow. And that's the bottom fan. And then I'll click the next tab, 955. It's a Model 3 fan flow. And that's the middle fan. And then Model 3 fan flow. Top fan. So we only need two gauges for the three fan system. But we're going to do a couple extra envelopes. So we'll click our next gauge. And that is an envelope pressure. And we'll call that one, that's our west. Envelope pressure north. Okay, and then our last gauge, we've got envelope pressure south. And the last one, we're going to choose a interior pressure. And that interior pressure is used to monitor the remote parts of the building. And the, the software will compare that to the induced pressure of the building. Okay, so we've got all our configuration set up. And we're going to go to recording, start recording. Now it's gonna, it's gonna actually scan for all those devices and, uh, and en enable that communication. So the communication will start now and I'm gonna give that a name. So you can see we started a new recording. So the first thing you notice is that we've got, all our gauges are listed here along with master. And these are the controls for the fan. So this is a slide controller, our crew settings here. We're doing a single zone test. So we're gonna ramp up all the fans at the same rate. So we're gonna use the master control setting. If we were doing um, individual townhouses, for example, that, that are attached side by side, we would wanna cruise each of those fans separately. And the default is it'll cruise on whatever the channel A setting is. So. I'm going to go up to view and we'll just hide those. So device status fan control, we'll just turn those off. So we'll just see the master fan controller. So a little bit about what we're seeing here. So we're seeing the, the four separate pressures, envelope pressures and, and the interior pressure. And we're seeing those. And then we're seeing uh, for each fan, we've got three fans that we can see that they're all sealed. And it'll show what the flow, the fan pressure and the flow amounts are, what the ring settings are. So I have to remember those rings, to put those ring settings on before we get the fan started up. So a little bit about our buttons across the top. The first one is a measurement line. So if you hover over there, you can see it says measurement line. And what that's going to show, instead of it showing our moving averages here, these are all locked in now. They're locked into where that measurement line is. So we can move across that measurement line and see how much variation from high to low. You know, we've got 3.8 on one side and low is maybe uh, 0 0.07. So we can, you know, see what the pressures are at different points across there. And, and we need to turn that off when we're stopped, done using it. So now it's, it's giving us live data again. The next one is a region select tools. And, and with that, we, we do a, a click drag and, and now it'll display what our numbers are, the average within that, within that period, okay? Next one is an event marker. So that'll put an event marker right, right at the end there. 
wherever we push the button. So you've got an event marker there. We can go. We can put an event marker anywhere by dragging. You know, click on that that to, that first tool and put it where we want an event, and then we could mark an event uh, back at that location. The next one is our baseline uh, POR, which is period of record. So we'll click that one, and that says include in an air tightness result. This is a baseline period of record, and I could enter in the name here. And I'm going to cancel that because there's another trick here. I can go back to that marker again and bring that back into a period where it was fairly calm here, and then click period of record. And it'll go back in time and create that period of record. So I'm going to call that a pre-base. OK, so now it took a two minute, made a, a two minute period of record. And at the end of that two minutes, it said remember, it says remember to add 0 0.07 to target nominal envelope pressure to account for building baseline. OK, so our first pressure, because it's a commercial building, we're going to go to 75 pascals. And our, if I click in here, that reminds me that our, our we were at positive seven, the average in that period. So I need to go down 0.7. So I'm going to go to 74.3. So now from positive 0.7 and negative 74.3 is 75 pascals. So the induced pressure is 75 pascals there. And then to move around the screen, you can, you know, you can click and drag like you do in Google Maps you, with a scroll. You can scroll in and out to, to zoom in and out. If you want to zoom in on a, a smaller period on the graph, you can do a shift, click, and then make a box. And then it'll zoom in on that. In order to zoom back out, you can just hit Auto T here. And then it'll zoom back out. And you can do Auto Y, and it'll adjust it automatically for, for moving up and down. So now I, I'm going to use a technique to keep the fans from spinning backwards. I've got all three speed controllers clicked off now, so they won't ramp up. And I'm gonna get up to about 30%. So what that'll do is when I click on a fan, it'll ramp it up to 30%. And when I do the, the first fan, it'll get that up to 30%. And then I'll click on the second controller and let the blade start spinning fairly fast before I uncap it. That'll keep it from spinning backwards. And then the same with the third one. I'll click on the third speed controller, let it ramp up, and then uncap. Okay, now all of them are on. We're up to 30% power. I'm going to mark these all as open. Mark all devices as open. And then I'm going to hit the cruise fan button. Okay, we can see our pressures are moving down now. And the first four, the is our, is our green pressures on the right side here. And that's our, our uh, four envelope pressures. And the average of those four envelope pressures, four channels are being displayed here and the total flow of our three fans. And we can see the green line going across is our target pressure. And once our pressure stabilize here a bit, we'll click on our fan on period, period of record. And that's where it will start recording our data and we'll call that negative 75 pascals. And that's a, a 20 second period of record. So it'll gather that information to be included in our test for 20 seconds. And then once that, that is outside the box, then we can adjust our cruise pressure. So our cruise pressure, we wanna move towards zero. Um, and if we click the up arrow, we'll move in uh, increments of five pascals to our next data point. Okay, so now we're gonna start, you can see our green line moved up and we'll start moving towards that. I noticed our interior pressure is moving in the wrong direction. It's a positive instead of a negative number. So I'm gonna move that from uh, input to reference. So it's moving in the negative direction and we want that to be within 10% uh, of our induced pressure. Then we're gonna press our next fan on period of, period of record once our pressure stabilize here. We'll start taking data for our, for our second data point and we'll call that negative, six, uh, negative 70. 
So now it, it, it starts becoming, you know, rather routine. We've kind of got, got the, the idea down. We're going to watch our, our pressures, our, our target pressures around 70. We're going to take a, a fan on period of record during that period of time. Once our data lines start moving outside of that, we'll click the up arrow to move up five pascals. So now our green line moves up and, and then we'll watch our our lines to following that and fairly steady. We'll click our next fan on period of record and we'll call that negative 65 pascals. The red ones are kind of tracking the green ones and that that's just a coincidence. That's, that's not always um, um, going to be the case because the red ones are our fan pressures and the green ones are our are, are envelope pressures. It's good practice after after you have three periods of record then we can check our results to see how they're doing. So we've got a results button up here. Click on that results tab and, and see how our data is doing. You know, we can see we want to look at our correlation coefficient. We want that to be 0.99 or better. <laughs> so we're pretty close to that. One of those data points is off a little bit, but, but I'm not concerned about that at this point. We speeded it up a little bit, so we're, we're taking our next... Uh, our next few data points, we've clicked up 55 pascals now. Now we can look at our data again, and now we're above 0.99. So now we, we've got in the range where it's kind of a windy day, but we're still, we're getting good data. So that's encouraging. We're going to take data at every 5 pascals till we get down to 25 for this test. Another thing we'll want to uh, keep an eye on is our lowest fan pressure. Looking at our data again, 0.99. Looks like our data is looking good. So it looks like we'll be able to get one more period of record in before we cap one of the fans. We'll turn off the speed controller. We'll put a fan cap over the fan and we'll mark that fan as sealed. Then we're ramping back up. So you can see our, our red line is our, our fan pressures. And because we only have two fans going instead of three, those two fans are, are ramped up quite a bit. Now we have two fans marked as open. One is sealed, and we can see that we're getting total flow is two of three fans because we've got one, one that's turned off and marked as sealed. So after this, um, we're at 35 pascals now. We'll check our results again, make sure we're doing okay. We'll move up to 30 pascals, do one more period of record, do a period of record at 30, and then we'll go down to 25. And then we'll do another baseline, pre and a post-test baseline for the depressurization test. And then, then we'll need to turn the fans around to do a pressurization test. So when we do two baselines in a row, then TechLog knows that we're going to do a, a pressurization test too. So then it'll switch from test one, which was the depressurization test, to test two. Um, we've got all our fans marked as sealed. We have to remember <laughs> we have to remember to do that before we start the period of record. All the fans are marked as sealed, and and uh, now it's it's asking us to um, check our results to make sure our results look good. So we'll check those, and we have got a 0.995. Um, so so that's looking good. And we'll see this baseline is part of test two now. This is the baseline, the pretest baseline for the pressurization test. And ASTM E779 and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers um, requires both pressurization and depressurization. So we will speed through this test and, um, and move on to the results at the end. We'll take a look before we stop recording. We'll want to look that both the test one and test two numbers look okay, and that looks okay. So we'll go up to recording, stop recording. It says, do you want to uh, stop the data gathering? And we say, yes, do, you, do we wanna view the existing test file? And we'll choose yes. Okay, our test results have opened up. And as a first step, I'm gonna zoom in on the areas that we wanna look at. And I do that by holding down the shift key and then click and drag my mouse and we'll choose the area that we want to zoom in on. There we go. Okay, so some things you'll notice is we've got quite a bit of wind on our baseline. 
And in the middle of the test, between our depressurization test, envelope pressures are in green and they're, they're on the negative side, and our pressurization test is the area of the test where we changing those fans around. You, you'll also notice the area of the test where we switched from three fans operating to two fans. Our fan that is capped, we're, we're showing the inverse of our, of our envelope pressure. The, the yellow line is our interior pressure, and, and we're monitoring that to make sure that we're within 10% of our envelope pressure. And we can see at, at um, 70 pascals here, we're, we're at, at about 18 pascals with our, with our interior pressure. So we're over that, that percent mark. And if that area that we're monitoring is inside the pressure zone, we don't have single zone conditions here. That should be tracking zero. So we've got a couple of options on dealing with that. We can put an additional fan in that zone, that zone with that higher pressure. We can put an additional fan to the outside and unlink that fan from the master control and control it based on the pressure on channel A of that gauge. So we'll configure a new gauge to measure that interior pressure on A and the flow on B. And then we'll cruise zero on that interior pressure. We'll measure the pressure in that zone where the blower door is set up with reference to the main body of the house. So it's kind of like you're setting up a, a regular blower door test. You're, you're in that room with a fan in there and you're measuring that room with reference to, instead of outside, you're measuring with reference to the main body of the building and you'll cruise zero pressure to maintain that space at the same pressure. And then you'll include the flow through that fan and the results because that's, that's blowing air to the outside. Another option is you could add a fan between, between that zone and the main part of the building and, and, and configure everything the same way, measure that space with reference to the main body of the building. You'll mark that fan as sealed and not include the results in, in the test because you're just using that fan to equalize pressure between those two zones and the air blowing to outside is going through other fans. So you're just using that fan to maintain pressure between um, those two zones. And that is often done if you have a multi-story building and, and one of the upper floors is not getting up to uh, an acceptable pressure, then you could just set up a fan in the stairway and, and use that to, to crew zero and, and maintain um, pressures in those spaces. Okay, and then we'll zoom in a little bit closer on, on our depressurization test. So again, I'm gonna hold down the shift and click and drag and, and include, include that whole space. So now you can see, see a little bit closer all of those different zones. And we've got them labeled, what our induced pressures are. And now if I, if I click inside one of those, so the negative 71, I'm going to click inside that, that zone. And now these numbers on the side are the, the averages. So, that's a, so this is a 30-second period of record. It says that at the top here, 30 seconds. And it shows what our average envelope pressure is on, on the four channels. And we can look at the individual pressures here and the flows, the flow through each fan, and then the total flow of those three fans. So we do that just by clicking on, on that period of record. If I click in there and then do a right click in there, I can have it show the statistics for that period of record. I could adjust that period of record to fill up the whole screen if I wanted to look closer at a period of record. I can, it's checked include in air tightness test results and I could uncheck that. I could edit that period of record or I could delete the period of record. So I've got some options there. It might be that, that it's a really windy day and, and I wanna move that period of record into a, into a section where, where it seems a little bit more stable or something like that. So I could, I could delete that period of record and create a new one. So, so there's a lot of flexibility on, on what you can do could, uh, I'm going to click on that measurement line and I'm going to put a mark where we change from two fans to three fans and just add an event here, went to two fans. So you can, you can add, add event markers in there. Now I'm going to go up to edit test details up here on this. 
And here we can enter in our indoor and outdoor temperatures, um, the altitude, and the test boundary surface area. So if we wanted this to calculate the, the CFM at 75 pascals per square foot of surface area, we can do that by entering our surface area. Okay, then I'm going to click on the results button. And this will bring us into our, our test results. So you'll notice all of our points here, you know, if you hover over one of the points, it'll show what that period of record is named, what the pressure was during that period of record, and what the flow is. And on a perfectly calm day, these, these data points will all fit pretty well on that line. Um, we're seeing some, you know, a little bit of movement in, in this case. And how we can tell how good our correlation is, how well those are fitting on that line, is look at the correlation coefficient here, the R. And we want that to be above 0.99, and it is. And our reporting pressure here, we've got set at 75. You could, you know, you could report that at whatever uh, pressure you want, but we're going to, uh, this is a commercial test, so we're going to report that pressure at 75 pascals. And we're set, test one is depressurize. We, to change, we can go to test two. So here's our pressurization test. And again, we've got, you know, some of these data points are a little bit off the line, but our correlation coefficient is still, is still pretty good here. If we are required to do 10 data points, we might want to do 12. And then these points that are the farthest off, we could, we could delete that period of record and get a little bit better data. It, it won't change our results by much, but, but you could get the correlation coefficient above 0.99 if it's not. You don't want to cherry pick data <laughs> to give you the best results. That's not the intent. The, the intent is to get as good a data as you can. So here is our total, our total CFM at 75 pascals, and the, we're at plus or minus 2.8%. And generally speaking, you want that to be less than, less than 5% to, to have good data. So here's the range. You know, we're at 10,013, and our range is, you know, we at, we're adding 2%, 2.8% to that and subtracting 2.8%. So our real number is somewhere between 9730 and 10296. Uh, and then our, our equivalent leakage areas and our, our coefficient and exponent of our fan curve, the coefficient is the CFM at, at one pascal. So we've got some, some other options if, if we're going to be generating a report. We can export all of this data as a Tektite Express file and open it in, in our Tektite Express software, which is a free download from our website. And then you can use that to generate a report. We have a US Army Corps of Engineer report also that includes the data uh, that's required by the Army Corps of Engineers. You, you can export that as a word and then add pictures and, and additional verbiage uh, to the report. But this brings in all of the data from the test that's required uh, by the Army Corps of Engineers. And you can also copy this data to the clipboard and then, and then paste it into an Excel uh, document if you, if you want to um, do the manipulation of the, of the data uh, uh, in, an Excel, in an Excel form. This demonstration shows a two-fan test on a duplex, so side-by-side -side units with no intentional openings between the two. We have two blower doors set up. We're starting our baseline. Uh, you can see that there's two gauges and a master control that, that each have a cruise target on them. We're going to set this up. So we're going to unlink those two from the master. So those two fans are now controlled by the, the gauge on each unit. So what we will hide the master control. So channel A of each unit is what these fans will be targeting. So once we get through the baseline period of record, It'll show us what our baseline was, and it's saying an average of 0.3. We're going to click in that, in that period of record, and it's going to show us what the individual targets are for those two units. So they're both at about 0.3 Pascal. So we're going to go with that. We're going to adjust each of those by 0.3 because that's what the baseline was on each unit. So if those units had different baselines. Uh, if one building was taller than the other, we would have different baseline numbers. 
So now we're, we've set each of them to ring A. So we've adjusted the ring settings. They're both set to ring A and we'll start the cruise. You can drag those along to speed it up a little bit. Our target for this first period of record is going to be 50.3 pascals in each unit. And we'll wait till those even out and then we'll, we'll choose a fan on period of record and we'll call that negative 50. So we're just gonna do a, a three point test. We'll do a test at 50, 40, and 30 pascals. Okay, now we've got we've got three points, so we'll take a look at our results. We've got 0.999, so we've got really good data. And this is showing us our total flow from, from all three units. Then next we're going to do just simply a, a CFM at 50 on one of those units. So we'll have one unit we'll mark as sealed, the other unit uh, we'll mark with ring A, and, and we will start cruising um, just that one unit. So we'll bring that one unit up to 50 pascals, and we're just gonna do a single point on that one unit at, at 50 pascals. So now we'll do a fan on period of record just for unit A, and we're gonna click not to not include that in, in our results because our results are for those three with all three fans running. It, it's not for doing a compartmentalization test uh, on just one unit. So now we're switching them out and we're sealing unit A and we've got ring um, A on unit B and we're gonna now cruise unit B and get that up to 50 pascals. So now we've completed the test and we'll stop the recording and then it will ask us if we want to view the recording and we'll say yes. Okay, here we launched the tech height file that we just created and you can see our baseline in our multi-point test with both fans running at the same time for those two units. And then unit A tested alone with unit B fan sealed, and then unit B was tested with unit 8 sealed. So we're testing just the total leakage of unit A at 50 pascals, total leakage of unit B at 50 pascals. So I'm going to click in, in that first one, unit A. So this is the total leakage of, of unit A. And, and we can see we're at 50.8 pascals, and unit B during that test had changed by 1.7. So not a lot of interconnection, but some, some connection between those two where, where the pressure has changed in unit B. So we're seeing, um, we just did a single point test at 50 and our, our flow is 2288 on that one. So then if I click on the second one, we can see that unit A pressure with, with unit B at, at um, 52.2, so we're a little bit over 50. Our total leakage at 52 pascals is about 1785, so we could adjust that down a little bit, but, but that gives us a ballpark, that total leakage at 50 pascals. So now I can, I'm can i going to click on the results tab, and, and this tells us what the total leakage with those two fans running is based on this multi-point test. So we've got really good correlation coefficient, or 0.999, so we've got good data and we're plus or minus uh, about three and a half percent because we just did three points. If we would have done more points, we probably would have got a better number there. Three points were plus or minus 3.5%. Uh, and we're, we're at a total of 38.38, but we don't know how much of that leakage there is for each unit. So we can do that calculation. And the way I'll do that, I'm going to use this region select tool. So this second tab over, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to draw a box around, around those three periods of record. Okay. And I'm going to mark the first one. At, we had ring A. And the second one, I'm going to mark as sealed. So now we've got a multi-point test with just unit A. Because I've got... I've got the B fan sealed. So now we can look at our results. This is our multi-point results for unit A is 2076. And then I'm going to I'm going to seal unit A and put ring A on unit B. And we'll look at those results 
And with those results, we're showing 1763 on that second unit. So that's, that's just the leakage to the outside. Because both of these units are at the same pressure, there's not going to be leakage between the units. So it's just, it's just leakage to the outside. So now so you can get a better idea of how those, how those tests compare, I entered that information in a spreadsheet. So we can see first unit A, the unguarded test, the one where we're, we're doing a total leakage of that, that one unit, just a, at 50 pascals, was 2288. The guarded test with both fans running was 2076. So a difference of, of a little over 209% of the total is, is leakage between those two walls. And then when we did the test on, on unit B, we could see 1785 and 1763. So, so not as much change, only 1% um, change in leakage with unit B. So then we have our totals. Our totals, the difference is about 6% different between guarded and unguarded. Yeah, and this is kind of unusual. These are pretty tight. Now, you know, 10 to 25% is more typical. 1% is, is kind of atypical. And then again, we've got unit A at 1.7 with, with uh, unit A at 50 pascals, unit B changed by 1.7 with, um, with unit B at 50 pascals, unit A changed by one pascal. So that kind of gives us an idea Multifamily tests are, are done in different ways, and depending on which way you do it, you can get you can get different different slightly different results. Okay, previously we briefly talked about our options for a report, either a, a Tectite Express report or a U.S. Army Corps report, and we are on our test results page. We want to first make sure that our reporting pressure of 75 pascals is set properly. And we want to view the average of the pressurization and depressurization test. So we want to view both and the average. So we'll go down to export to Tektite Express. And when you do that, it creates a Tektite Express file, a .bld file that you can open in Tektite Express. And, and you'll save that. To where you want to save it to and then i'll pull up that tectite file you want to uh, fill out all of the information on our our test info page uh, the volume floor area if you want floor area included surface area height of the building etc and then we'll go to next and it pulled in the information from our, our devices, there's a chip on our devices, and it'll bring in the, the calibration dates uh, of the gauges. And then this is our, our test results page, so it's showing the graph of both tests. And we can look at our results, and this is all our results information. And then to generate the report, we simply go up to File, and you know we can preview the report or print the report. And, and once we've printed the report, we can, um, we can open that report. And this is the first page our report, of our report. So it's brought in our, our company logo and our company information, the, the, our customer information and the building address, the test results, uh, pressurization, uh, depressurization, pressurization, and average. So we've got our CFM here. Our, our air changes per hour at 75 pascals, our CFM per square foot of floor area, CFM per square foot of surface area, and then our, our leakage areas, uh, building leakage curve information. Um, it'll pull in a, a, a graph and the volume, surface area, floor area, height, year of construction information, and the equipment information and our other data. So now this is the this is the raw data, deviations from standard if there were any, and then our results from the uh, pressurization test, our other information that we've entered in, and then our calibration information. So that that's what what that report will look like. Our other option was to choose the 
the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer report. So if I click on that, um, it, it'll bring in all of this temp test information, but we'll have to choose what our exterior pressure configuration, in this case, we're averaging our, our exterior pressures and we were located inside the building and we're gonna do both pressurization and depressurization. So we have to tell, tell it that information so it'll include that information in the report. Um, we'll enter in all of our building information, our testing agency information, and what personnel were on site. And then after we've done, we're done with that, we can go to, um, we can either view the report or we can export that as either a PDF or an RTF. So what an RTF is, is the rich te text format. And that's the one we're gonna choose because then we can open that in Word and we can include any other verbiage information we wanna include in that about the test and, and pictures if we wanna put those pictures once we so we're going to export that report to RTF, and then we will open that in Word. And, and um, this is what that document will look like when you open it in Word. So this is all of the information that's required by the Army Corps of Engineers. We're not including any additional information beyond that, so you can, you can add whatever additional information you want beyond that. But this, this is bringing all the data that they want to see. So uh, building information, witnesses that were on, on site, the results of the depressurization and pressurization test, and then the average of, of those two tests information, any deviations from standard. And in this case, the Army Corps of Engineers requires you to include interior pressures. And we had one label as an interior pressure, and that was outside of the bounds of what was acceptable. Um, so it'll, it'll show that for both the depressurization and pressurization. Our interior pressures didn't meet the pressure uniformity. Pressure. So that's what, what that's looking for. And then our next two pages, the, the um, uh, information about calibration and, and those dates and the building elevation and, and um, And then the, the raw data. So all of the data that they want to see, the nominal building pressures and the adjusted building pressures and, and interior building pressures um, from each part of the test and, and the test graph. So that's, that's what that report will look like. So, so you've got a couple of good options in, in reporting, either just the basic Tectite Express report or more detailed information with all the data in the Army Corps report. Next, we're going to talk about what's included in a three-fan blower system and how to set that up. So the first step will be setting up the aluminum frame and the red nylon panel. And you want to make sure you get that frame tight in the opening. So when you grab that on the top, and yank hard on it, you shouldn't be able to pull it out of the opening. You, you want to make sure you're, that's not going to pop out of the opening during a test because that could really do damage to the fans if that occurs. So you can see besides the standard crossbar, the lower crossbar, there's two upper crossbars, Velcro straps on to strap the fans in. Then we'll put the fans in place. I would usually start at the bottom, put that bottom fan in place, and then uh, the second fan and then the top fan. Then the three controllers, the three speed controllers, we have a gauge board that you could attach all three speed controllers to. You'll attach that and then put the two gauges in. We just need two gauges for a three fan system and the gauge boards. And this is showing using ethernet for, for the connection back to the computers. We'll set up the left gauge like we would for a single fan test where the reference on channel A is going to the outside. And there's a green patch with a double-sided tap on it. We'll connect our green tube on the inside of that. And then on the outside, uh, the tap on the other side, you'll connect a long tube and run that off to, away, from the, away from the fan. The input on channel B will go to the first fan. The input on the second gauge on channel A will go to the middle fan. And the input on B will go to the top fan. And when you have three fans in one opening and the fans are running at high speed, 
there's certainly a lot of turbulence in that area and we have four taps that that are open that we'll want to have tubes connected so we'll want to have four tubes connected to each gauge so none of the taps are open so the system comes with a with a tubing manifold that allow you to connect the three fan reference ports to this tubing so those are those are connected together and then we'll run the end of that tubing out of the way of the fan so we're away from that area of turbulence and then we have a second white tube for that purpose that will go to the input on channel A and then that will go off to the side also so now we have we have a tube connected to all of those those pressure taps and then we also have it's kind of hard to see in this image but we have a, a fan control cable that is about four feet long and splits the signal from one gauge into three so we can connect all three speed controllers to that tap on the first gauge and when you're running the software and doing a single zone test on a building it'll be sending each gauge that's uh, that's linked to the master controller will will get the same signal and and that signal will allow you to ramp up up to six fans from one gauge okay and next we're going to do a pressurization test so we'll want to flip the fans around so we just flipped around the bottom fan flip around the big or the the second fan and then flip around um, that third fan so now our the side of the uh, fans with the flow sensors are, are on the outside and we're seeing the, the back side of the fan now and we're going to need to connect our, our fan references to the outdoors so so that that is done easily now by connecting that blue tube to the second tap so there's a second blue tap and we'll connect our fan reference tube to that and then we'll also connect a tube to the other side and put that off to the side of the fan too we'll want that fan reference to be on the same side of the building that these fans are set up so so it's in the same uh, pressure zone but now all three of our fan references are to the same location where our flow sensors are it'll also come with three fan caps so you're seeing this it's like a, a, um, a piece of red nylon with an elastic uh, strap on it so like a shower cap that'll cap over the cap over the fan so you don't have to go outside and put rings on um, you'll do all of that from the inside and generally speaking for for multi-fan systems like this where you've got three or more fans you typically won't use rings you'll just shut one fan down if the pressure at the flow sensor gets too low gets below 30 pascals the, the software will warn you by flashing uh, flashing the lowest pressure red and then you'll know it's time to cap one of those fans off so that's easy to do with these caps just set your rings aside and use the fan caps instead okay and then this is showing that that uh, three controller gauge board and another thing you need to keep in mind is that each fan um, will draw uh, you know a maximum of about 15 amps so so you'll need to have each fan on a separate 15 amp or 20 amp breaker and the way you would check that what we've used is with a kilowatt meter and that's an easy way to read voltage but you'll need something to read the fan voltage so you'll plug in the the bottom fan run an extension cord for the second fan and plug the kilowatt meter into the the end of the extension cord and and it'll be reading right around uh, it should be right around 120 volts and and then crank on the first fan turn it all the way up real quick and and you should see if if you're on the same circuit you'll see a voltage drop um, if you see very little change then then you're on a then, then you're on a separate circuit but if it drops more than than three or four volts then that's an indication that you're on the same same circuit um, run a extension cord to that third fan crank the first fan up see if there's a change crank the second fan up see if there's a change and now you've confirmed that that all three fans are on separate circuits so that's our setup for the three fan system We've got a blow our applications guide uh, beyond single family residential that, that goes into a lot of detail on 
testing commercial buildings. There's a lot involved. And this is a great document to guide you through all of those things that, that you need to think about when, when testing commercial buildings. And um, Terry Brennan and Mike Clark from Camrod and Associates helped us with this. And then uh, uh, Gary Nelson, Colin Olson, and myself from the Energy Conservatory helped put this together. Okay. And, and also check out our website, energyconservatory.com. We've got other webinars that are posted there and lots of great documents.